So for today's word of the day, Sean, it's Keyblade Noun. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of this. What is it? A keyblade. First of all, do you have any idea of why I might choose keyblade for this word of the day? Oh, actually, I feel like I should, but I don't. Okay, well, cool, because it is a little bit tricky. Uh, for listeners who don't know, a keyblade is from my favorite video game series of all time, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Yes. And this is the weapon that you fight with in the game. It's your main kind of weapon. And there's multiple kinds of keyblades with keychains and stuff. But a keyblade's main power is the ability to seal or open the barriers between worlds, as well as to lock a world's keyhole, (laughs) mm -hmm, preventing the Heartless from attacking uh, that world's heart. As an offset of the ability, the keyblade can also be used to lock or unlock any lock, allowing the user to access any sealed interior, whether it be a locked room, gate, or treasure chest. That's a treasure chest with Dalmatians in them. <laughs> the Keyblade opens and shuts locks <laughs> by emitting a bright, thin beam of light. In addition, ooh, oh, oh. I, I know, this is crazy. A Keyblade can be used to unlock people's hearts, restoring them to their true home and nature. Users of the Mark of Mastery have access to the power of waking, which you don't learn until Dream Drop Distance, which can revive people who died, returning their heart to a living previous stage. And advanced users, like Sora, can use the special technique to return people's hearts to their original worlds, including to bring them to the past, altering the timeline. What crazy! Keyblade. (laughs) Yeah, and there was a time, Kevin, where I could tell you why the story is as confusing as it was and all the ins and outs i know you still can but yeah, yeah i have to play them again and i know because on marvelous galaxy of disney i could not remember chain of memories i'm like kevin's probably screaming into his phone right now i was i was <laughs> you haven't even read that wait what are you doing with the book so he has the confidence to finish the story hear now the words of the witches this is kevin and welcome to words of the witches the Charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser-known published material in the Charmed universe and decide how it fits into the grand narrative of the TV series. Silence! (laughs) (laughs) Not yet! (laughs) I did it! I did it! I did it! Okay. Okay. Well, hello. Welcome to Words of the Witches, episode 59. Uh, I'm Kevin, your resident Charmed resource. And I'm Sean, and I just love comic books. Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, today we'll be covering Last Witch Effort. But before that, we have poll results, Sean. Another poll uh, for poll. you to, to giggle at. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what the question was for last week? It was... Was it was it which story do we like best? Which thread? Yeah, <laughs> from that issue, yes, correct. So your options were Piper and Cole in the failed higher realm or Circuit City, um, <laughs> Paige and Leo in the upper regions, or Phoebe and Coop at the manor. And I, I said remember- Paige and Leo. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said Piper and Cole. Let's see what the rest of the peoples say. Okay. So on Instagram... So the bottom, 13%, said Phoebe and Coop at the manor. Only two votes. 27% said Paige and Leo. And 60% said Piper and Cole. So a lot of people like Piper and Cole. Yeah, well, I guess they are funny together. I'll give them that. Although I gotta say, I do really appreciate Phoebe and Coop at the manor because... Phoebe was the one that really had to like save the day and really had to keep her. She was all alone. I mean, they're all alone, but she seemed like she's the only one that was like not in par- taint danger or in like any like real crazy realm trapped somewhere. So I can imagine the loneliness and, and frustration and fear that she must've felt in that moment. So I think that's really powerful in its own right too. That's true. Um, but yeah, maybe people didn't see that. Uh, well, let's look at Twitter. Actually got a little bit higher and Twitter Paige and Leo were the bottom at 14%. Oh. (laughs) 
and then Phoebe and Cooper 29%. Although maybe I'm thinking Phoebe, they, people chose Phoebe and Cooper because they're like, I love Phoebe and Cooper together. They're so cute. <laughs> they probably didn't know what it was. So <laughs> they're like, I didn't know Piper and Cole were together. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that's a weird relationship. Why are Paige and Liam dating? Weird. <laughs> like, so they probably didn't realize what we were talking about. Um, but Piper and Cole still won at 57% on Twitter. So yeah, interessant. Interessant. Speaking of French, <laughs> oh jeez! Did you hear the announcement that Shannon and Holly and Rose are going to be in Paris? I heard it because I seem to know someone who is traveling all the way to Paris just to meet them. I is. <laughs> <laughs> What's oh, you? It's moi. And just because I told myself, because Shannon was the only one I haven't met yet, and I told myself the next thing she does. I'm jumping at it. I'm going because I need to meet her. And I was like, <gasps> and then I have three of them together in one place too, like to see Sh- Shannon, Prue and Paige together. That's Swoop. pretty special. Swoop, super special. It would have been like if Phoebe died instead and you could just see the three of them together. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited to go to Paris. I haven't been there since 2006. So I'm trying to brush up on my French, my Francais, mon Francais. Uh, so... <laughs> So Are you yeah. going to go to Disney while you're there? I is. Yes. Yay! So I'll be there a whole week before the convention. So I'm going to spend a few days in Paris proper, the city, doing some touristy, just foodie things. And then I'm spending three days in Disneyland Paris. And then I'm going to be doing the convention. So I have a whole little trip planned around it now. Cool, and I'll be there in February to do a lot of the similar stuff, except meet Shannon Doherty. <laughs> Yay! That's super exciting. So then we'll have a shared experience just at different times. Yes, exactly. I'm curious to see another park that I've never been to before. So, yeah, and we have uh, we have four day tickets because we had to get a ticket for every day we stay in their property. So it was a little more expensive, but it's not bad. Yeah. So cool. Well, silence. <laughs> Here now the words of the witches. Today we are covering season nine, issue eleven. On a scale oh. from one to ten, you are an eleven. <laughs> 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 oh, and then, this was published June twenty second, two thousand eleven. It was written by Paul Roditis. Artwork by Tess Fowler. Do you recognize this name, Tess Fowler? That sounds so familiar. She drew Morality Bites Back. She did the art from Morality Bites Back as oh, well. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, coloring by Milan Parvanov. Letters by Jim Campbell. Edited by Ralph Tedesco, Raven Gregory, and Paul Roditis. And we do have two covers for this one as well. Cover A is David Seidman again. And we have the three girls in the Triquetra. They're all kind of doing their powers, I guess, Paige has this is a season five poet picture of Paige. Oh, they tried to darken the hair. Um, and she's orbing <laughs> like a crystal or something. Piper is there doing her blowy uppy orby. I don't know what she's doing. She has like an orb something. And then Phoebe is levitating at the top. We have smoke. Yeah. And then eyeballs. Eyes. <laughs> eyes. <laughs> eyes. I'm guessing this is Nina's eyes. Yeah, but they're they're kind of mannish. <laughs> they are kind of mannish. Those eyebrows. Ooh. um this is actually quite similar to the brewing storm novel that paul ruditus also wrote isn't that interesting because there's a a lightning and eyes in the back so mm, interesting again um we also have this one cover b i have both cover b with just phoebe there some season eight pictures and phoebe yeah that one's kind of boring although i do like phoebe yeah, I mean, these are like stylized, there's like color, it's a very blue, um, but yeah, this is the first of a, they they have a cover like this of each of them in the upcoming issues, so. Okay, good, that's what I was going to say I'm hoping for, that there'd be like a connecting one, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. so, and that's cover B. Yay! All right, are you ready to get into it? Yes, queen, yes! <laughs> yes! Okay. <laughs> Kevinisha, Kevinisha, <laughs> I I love it. I'll wear, I'll take that name with pride. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'll start with page one. Are you ready? 
<laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> so we see the manor in a little box. It goes, Paige! Phoebe looks like she's pooping in the air a little bit. <laughs> Oh, she does. <laughs> oh, why do you do this to me? <laughs> She's like, oh, it's going to be a really big one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she's screaming in the attic, and it's a mess, because this is after she did the spell and everything was wh- whirling about, you know. Um, and so Koopa's like, y- you know, you're screaming, and any ladder isn't going to bring her back, pretty much. And then she's like... And she said, I thought Sam's healing power might pull her out of the coma. So she called Sam, Paige's father, to try to heal Paige. And it was, it failed, apparently. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. So, but they're like cleaning up the attic. And Phoebe is kind of really, still really worried. And she's like, I can't do this on my own. And Coop is just like, you are not alone. Very sweet. But she's like, but it's not the same without them. Aw. Aw, poor Phoebe. Yeah. So on the next page, I was wondering, so is this supposed to be Sam in this picture? It is. Sam. It is Sam. Okay. Because I kept getting confused because they kept using Sam's name, but they don't really show him much. So (laughs) I was like, did they show him yet? So I guess, yeah, that is him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we see Sam by Henry's side as Henry is holding Paige's unconscious hand. And Sam says, we'll figure something out. And uh, Henry's just kind of like, uh huh. Sure, asshole. Like whatever, dude. <laughs> so then we see, as Paige's body is in the physical, her spirit is up in the up there's with uh uh uh, uh Kyle. <laughs> 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 so he says, Kyle says, we need to get your spirit back into your body, and she says, we, and he says, the the other elders have moved on. So basically. Um, the other elders are in a similar predicament where their body and soul are separated. So he's kind of her only hope at this point. So this is making more sense as to why they brought Kyle back to me because he's playing a pretty big role. <laughs> mm-hmm. Although I'm very confused by this because he says they are up there. They they have their physical bodies with them. Yeah. Where she is set. like, how can you move on with your physical body? I don't understand I how that, that works. Because <laughs> when you move on, you're supposed to just take your soul and your physical body stays here and decomposes and stuff. Like, what? I'm very confused. I'm trying to... Maybe maybe because, like, your soul is supposed to move on from the body, so maybe there's problems if they're separated when it moves on. Yeah. I, just, I can't really think of headcanon for this. <laughs> I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, there's no explanation. This is this is very... So if anybody listening knows more about this, for sure tell me, because this is very confusing to me. Because um, he's like, if you go into the light without your corporeal form, I'm not sure you'll be able to return. Because yes. Oh! Maybe, maybe so maybe they take their bodies up there so that they could come back to life. Because if they go there without the body, then they're dead, dead. Oh, I see. You're right. He does explain it in that line that I skipped over. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah he's saying if she goes as a spirit she's just stuck but if she goes with her body she has like a, an anchor to reality yeah okay. okay that makes sense to me good cool Woo. and then uh, uh Paige says what about piper is she up there and kyle says no you idiot she's somewhere else <laughs> yeah so now we go back to circuit city <laughs> <laughs> So if you're listening to this episode and you did not listen to the last episode and you're confused, uh, Circuit City is what we decided is where Piper and Cole are in the failed higher realm that Nina created. So this limbo kind of area. And she is, Piper is waking up after she just went into a coma from eating the apple. And Cole's like, welcome back. (laughs) And she's like, I was unconscious for how long? Not too long. (laughs) And then what he said, she's like, I knew I couldn't trust you. I hate you, Cole. You're evil. Leave me alone. And he's like, that's not the problem. It's like, the magic only works if you trust me. So you're going to have to trust me if you want to get out of here. She's like, the hell that's going to happen. <laughs> like, I'm never going to trust you. She's like, well, then you'll be stuck here forever. Pick your poison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Piper's just really not having it. <laughs> So then we're in the up there's with Nina. She's playing with her balls. She's got the red and the blue. And she says the upper regions in the underworld, forces in constant battle. 
Well, today I'm going to bring them together. I'm going to gain access to the upper regions, and I'm going to find my beloved. And Leo's kind of like, well, I mean, that'll destroy everything, kind of. Like, you'll destroy everything, including yourself. And she says, actually, no, I won't. <laughs> It'll open a portal where I can get to my love that way. So I don't really care what happens to everything else. I just want to get to my love. <laughs> like, mm, all right. <laughs> And she's in this last one in the lower right. She's sporting a big forehead. Like, that's a Reese Witherspoon forehead. Right <laughs> <there>. <laughs> yeah, she is. And then the next page continues the journey. Leo is all tied up in chains. And he's like, Nina, I know this isn't you. She's like, no, but I must do this because the elders and the angel of destiny made the world around me. They decided everything. They're trying to decide my fate when I should be in charge of my fate. Like, this is not right. So I'm taking control. And she's like, I never killed anyone. Good. Just like we talked about. She's like, I only killed the evil and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, I played by the rules until now. So she takes her balls and she has them. Her boobs are everywhere. Look at that cleavage. Wow. Um, and, <laughs> and then wow. she like squishes the balls together. Oh, <laughs> ouch. She's she squishes the boss together, and we have a rhyme time moment! Should we try a spell? Why not? Let's try a spell. In the wind, I send this rhyme. Bring death before me, before my time. You've really got to lay off the rhyming group. Wonderful. Witty, but wordy. I did the rhyme. I will do the time. Good night. Yay! And this is the, the spell to unite the sphera of light and dark. It says, Iungo, Iungs, Iungtum, Latin. <laughs> Latin. And she is looking mighty possessed, crazy, cool, like Storm here. Yeah, it is very Storm. You're right. <laughs> I, Nina, mistress of the balls. <laughs> yes, we'll squish my balls together. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> So, speaking of Mistress of the Balls, on the next page, we have a lovely spread here, Kevin. Mm. Lovely double spread. <laughs> so, Nina's uh, looking all... We see her from the back. She has her hands held high, and she says, Welcome to the new order! The new order from me, Nina! <laughs> Mistress of the Balls! <laughs> <laughs> and we see in the middle of the page, um, the, the squished-up balls have come together to form this, like, real weird squirrely thing that almost looks like there's an item in the middle it looks like and an embryonic maybe, ball <laughs> yeah maybe it's a dragon ball this is the origin Ooh. of the dragon balls <laughs> okay what so we, for? <laughs> we see every single realm the physical the up there's uh circuit city they're feeling um this shaking this rumbling this cracking this rumble ding dong <laughs> so apparently her squishing the balls has just thrown everything out of order and phoebe and henry oh no no not henry coop i always get them mm -hmm. mixed up they decide to go try to help dad so he doesn't have to like work with sam because who wants to work with the white lighter who cheated with their wife yeah well in this battle page because henry's in the blue coop is in the green so henry is there you're right Okay, cool. That is Henry. He looks just mm -hmm. like him. How did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Um, you know, you hear the drill bell ring, and she's like, that must be Dad. And Henry's like, oh, he's going to come face to face with the white letter his wife replaced him with. Ooh. <laughs> like, oh. Because <laughs> that never happened in the series, you know, so that would be an oh, interesting right. dynamic. Yeah. I wonder, because when, when Victor met up with Patty later when it was like the time displaced patty yeah he seemed to like still want to get with her like i remember thinking like he took her into the room and fucked her like <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> <laughs> mm. so the next page uh henry is opening the door he's answering the door and it is victor uh it's raining he has an umbrella and he's like come the kids are sleeping and this is where it's like oh my gosh this is this a mormon family this is too many kids i keep forgetting how many children there are <laughs> 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 so they're all in the sitting room sleeping too many kids and they're talking we see them walk through the parlor there's the grandfather clock there 
Victor can sense that something is wrong with Henry. He's, you know, because Henry's still, after all this time, after the choking and the magic stuff, he's still really broken up. It's not settled yet. So this is where we start a little bit of conversation between the two mortal men with magic. He's like, I know that. He's like, I know that look. The one that has you questioning everything about life married to a witch. Mm. Yeah. And so this conversation really starts on the next page. And I have to say, like, I really like not only the artwork for Victor, but also the dialogue they've given him. This feels very Victor to me. They got this on point. So we have uh, Henry's kind of like, it's not the time now, Victor. Like, everything's going to shit. And Victor's like, no, it's exactly the time to talk about this. We need to figure out, like, what's going on with you. And Henry's kind of like, I just feel selfish for even suggesting. And and Victor's like, good, feel selfish. (laughs) Like, we need you time. We need to figure this out for you. It's not just about Paige. It's about you. Yeah. So he explains, I turned my back on my family, on my children. Patty gave up Paige because of the magic. That was also for the wrong reason. And Henry says, but why does it have to be like this? And Victor says, because it does. He says, you fell in love with Paige um, because you're just like her. You may feel useless, but you're not. Just because you don't have magic, you're still giving her the strength to do what she needs to do with her magic. And Victor kind of says, or (laughs) Henry says, I know, but and Victor says, You may not have powers, you may not know magic, but you are part of her strength. She needs you more than you need magic. And Henry says, thank you. I had to hear that. Aww. My heart. Beautiful moment. I love here that Victor holds a picture of Prue, Piper, and Phoebe as children, which it's nice that they still have a picture of Prue there sitting out at the house. Not the one that we like and know, but there's still a picture of Prue there (laughs) somewhere. Yeah. (laughs) That is cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're, it doesn't really look like Shannon Doherty, but we know why. But at least we know who it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I yeah, really where's, like where's the... her Where's her eye mark? Where's her oh, bowl? Yeah. bowl? <laughs> they failed really, me there. I like this because it's very, like, a lot of Charmed has been. It's very real-world issue, but with a magic twist. Because I could see this conversation if Piper, or <laughs> uh, Paige was making more money than Henry. This is a very real issue where the guy mm-hmm. could feel like, oh, I'm useless. My wife makes more like I'm emasculated. So I really like that. Even if you don't have magic, this is still something that can give you strength or confidence in who you are. Yeah. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing scene between them, you know, and it makes sense because they get each other. They relate to each other. They can understand each other's problems. And because Victor has lived it, he is equipped to give some wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So the next page uh, continues the conversation a little bit. He's like, don't think your problems are solved just because we talked though. You still have plenty to, to hurt all here. He's like, I live in fear for my girls every day, um, but the girls make me proud with the things they do. So sweet. And so then Henry starts going upstairs. Victor says, he'll take care of the kids. He gives me a really kind of a sassy side eye booty swish there i don't know what that is i like it (laughs) he's gonna fuck henry (laughs) i'm like oh my thank you victor (laughs) they don't call me daddy victor for nothing (laughs) right (laughs) then he's looking he's looking at the kids again he's like wait a minute there's an extra child here where did this guy come from (laughs) this is (laughs) he's like that's henry jr little henry so it's official he's adopted we know we know and this is the first time a baby looks like a baby and not an old man (laughs) Yeah, I think it helps that's a nice big close-up and not, like, far in the distance, but you're right. It is a cute little baby, so. Yeah. So, on the next page, we have Phoebe saying it's getting worse out there, and then Henry walks in and says, Sam's keeping an eye on Paige, and Victor's got the kids, so we can get down to business. To defeat the Hans! (laughs) (laughs) Wow. I had to. <laughs> so we have Coop say, wow, your attitude has changed in the last few minutes. And Henry's like, yeah, I needed a well-deserved talk. I had an adjustment. Everything's good now. But what about your sisters? And um, Phoebe says, wherever Paige is, she can't hear me. And he says, and Piper? And she says, hearing calls is a white lighter thing. Piper can't do it. And... Henry suggests you'd think with the bond you three have as sisters, you'd be able to bypass using a white lighter call and just use the power of three. 
And then Phoebe says, well, it doesn't work like that. At least the power of three doesn't. Winky face. Oh, winky face. So then it cuts to Phoebe going right to a spell, which seems like kind of abrupt. I feel like it's almost like there's a page missing. Like we jumped really quick. Yeah. But she's all of a sudden doing a spell. Rhyme time moment! Yay! <laughs> Should we try a spell? Why not? Let's try a spell. In the wind, I send this rhyme. Bring death before me, before my time. You've really got to lay off the rhyming through. Wonderful. Witty, but wordy. I did the rhyme. I will do the time. Good night. So it says, Hear now the words of the witches, the secrets we hid in the night. The oldest of gods are invoked here. The great work of magic is sought. In this night and in this hour, I call upon the ancient power. Bring together my sisters three. Embrace the power. Unite the power. Yes. And so this is a variation of the Dominus Trianus, which was the first spell she said in the show that gave them their powers. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, and she's just sitting alone in her little triquetra on the floor with candles. And she did that. And then she's like, telepathically speaking. I love her little Lady Deathstrike fingers here, too. She's like... Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, she's like, Piper, Paige, can you hear me? Piper, Paige, can you hear me? <laughs> Papa, can you hear... Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So next up, we see a kind of triple image. We see Piper in Circuit City going, Phoebe? And in the middle, uh, Phoebe's going, Piper, Paige? And then on the right, Phoebe's or <laughs> Paige is saying Phoebe. And then um, she's we see Piper standing with Cole, and we see a little bubble, which is Phoebe's voice. Say, Piper, can you hear me? And then <laughs> Cole says, Phoebe, where? Like he's really excited about yeah. Phoebe's name coming up. <laughs> and Piper's like, she's speaking to me telepathically. Like, put your boner away. And Cole's like, that's new. Tell her I said hi. <laughs> She's like, mm. I'm yeah. mm. <laughs> okay, like, more stop you it. Right. <laughs> and then in the up there, so we see a page with Kyle. And uh, Phoebe says, Paige, is that really you? And Paige is like, yeah, duh. Like, you called me. This is your conference call. Of course it's me, you idiot. And Kyle's kind of like, it's better if you don't speak out loud. Just think it. You look like an idiot talking to yourself. <laughs> like, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> really? I don't know. It's just the two of them. Who cares? I know. Right. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Stupid Kyle. I know. <laughs> oh, so the next page, we got a lot going on. Uh, so it's this beautiful, like, picture of the Triquetra floating. Paige has her eyes closed and Piper has her eyes closed on, during each of the other um, parts of the Triquetra. This very this kind of look is very similar to what's on the cover. It's also very similar to what they did in the illustrated storybook with them as kids. Although, this is something that I've been doing forever too. I've just, people have been putting them in the Triquetra. So I don't think it's anything new or too noteworthy, but it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're having a conversation all telepathically. It's like, how are you doing this? I tapped into the power of one. Okay. The power of one. <laughs> um, so we d- the power of one did come up in this series before. In Witch Trial, where, she's the- where it says, The rite of passage, fight it with the power of one or else. A more powerful of evil that awaits will destroy you. Okay. But they thought the power of one was Prue. But they really realized that the power of one was the three of them working together. So really, the power of one is the power of three anyway. <laughs> okay, okay. So I, I don't know if this is the same power of one that they're referring to, but it seems kind of weird that you need to do that when she's like, the power of three can't, but I can do the power of one and make us the power of three. <laughs> yeah, that is a little weird. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's what they're getting at. Um, Paige is like, I'm with Kyle. And and then Phoebe's like, is Pepper with you? She's like, no, she's somewhere else. Alone. And then she's like, can you get back? Uh, do either, can either of you get back? And then Piper's like, possibly, but I don't trust it. Er, I'm not telling you who it is, but er. And then <laughs> um, 
and so they'll figure it out. They're like, what's happening? Where's Leo? Not here. And then uh, Paige is like, I think he's still with Rennick and Nina and up theirs. So I hope. So they're all just kind of <laughs> saying what they know. <laughs> so I wonder if the idea here was supposed to be like, let's simplify it, I guess, because they use the term power of one. I'm probably wrong, but like just simplify it and use a spell to contact her sisters. But yeah, because yeah, this is a, cause no power. This is a, a spell she used to yeah. unite them together. She did it herself, but eh. It's just, it's a little muddy there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, out of the mud and into the next page, we see Nina still playing with her smushed balls. And we see uh, Rennick is kind of goading Leo, who's uh, tied to a pantheon. And he's like, remember back in the <laughs> 80s when I got the zombies to remake the thriller video? That kind of thing would go viral today. <laughs> the video and the zombies. <laughs> what does this have to do with anything? <laughs> this influencer dark letter? What is this? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny, though. I'm glad it's in there. But it's like, it's kind cute. of random. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Leo's like, I'm not in the mood to reminisce. Renek, <laughs> the universe is tearing itself apart. Shut up, Renek. Shut up. <laughs> Your name is just Kenner backwards. Go play with some toys. <laughs> <laughs> and Renek says, Really? Had it noticed. Oh. <laughs> and Leo says, What are you getting out of this? Everything's being destroyed. And Renek says, I get what's left. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nina turns her attention to the the boys playing with each other, and she says, "I thought a former white lighter slash elder slash avatar would understand. <laughs> it's a chance to start over again. Free will. No more elders telling everyone what to do. No more grand design." And Leo says, "The elders were already changing things. There was a new council, new rules." And Nina says, "How long before they fell back to the old patterns?" This way, my children have a chance to live freely. Well, the survivors do. I return to where I belong, reunited with my love. Win-win. So she's coming off as, like, very apocalypse to me from X-Men. Like, I'm just going to make a huge cat cataclysm, and whoever survives is the strong, and they're meant to survive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know you like her, because she's like, fuck the elders. That's why I'm doing all this. I hate the fucking elders. I know, I know. I, this issue it really gets you on Nina's side. You can really understand. Renek's like, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Why do we fight for so long? He's like, because you're a murderer. He's like, well, no, I was just following the rules. This is this is the role I was assigned, and this is what we have to do. And he was like, no, we define ourselves. Um, so this is a good point. It's like, so do we choose our fate? Or are we are we just assigned a morality? You know, that's something that's really fascinating to. To think about and then nina nina looks like mini driver here no <laughs> yes <laughs> but at least she's olive <laughs> yes that's true and she's like yeah and look what playing good did for you, you how were you rewarded you were put on ice you were kept away from your woman your children were manipulated and nearly killed like what kind of life is this so yeah and then leo's like you're no different from the elders or the ancients of destiny you just want to make one you just want to be the one to make the rules instead of them. She's like, well, I deserve that. I earned that right because of what they did to me. I'm like, okay, get it, Nina. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, here I go with my embryonic ball. It's time for the real fun to begin. So then next up we have uh, the three sisters are still talking to each other. We see Piper saying, I don't like it at all. And Paige says, I'm not crazy about it either, but we have to be ready for whatever Nina is planning. And Phoebe says, it's her only shot. I can't keep this connection open any longer. It's taking too much effort. Do what you have to to get back to me. I love you. Aww. <laughs> and Piper says, I love you too. <laughs> I love this part. <laughs> and then she looks over at Cole and says, not you. I was talking to Phoebe, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cole says, it's a leap of faith. Like the magic of the apple isn't going to work if you don't trust the magic and trusting the magic is trusting me. So therefore, if you don't trust me, you're not going to get back. So it's quite the conundrum for you. Pipes. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, basically Piper's like, okay, I'll try again, but you're not coming with me. Right. Cause I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> He's like, no, <laughs> no, I don't think my presence there would help right now. 
And then she says, someday you're going to tell me all about this. And she bites the apple. And then uh, Cole says, someday, but not today. <laughs> oh, and then, this bite, though, looks really kind yeah. of loud and gross. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> not a bad. cute bite. <laughs> no. Oh. You know, oh, you know what? I'm realizing, too. Let's go backtrack a little bit. Okay. It's funny, she's so familiar to me, though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars, that's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. The page where it's close to one of Piper's face, it looks very much like a call to arms in season seven when she's looking at baby Chris, the things attack when she's looking at it. So I'm going to do a side by side of that too. Ta da! Nice. You look familiar moment. Ta da! Yeah. Okay. And then back at the manor, Phoebe's like, stand back because a portal has opened and Piper's coming home. And then Henry takes Piper's hand and says, but what about Paige? Is Paige coming? And Piper says, Henry, or no, sorry, Phoebe says, Henry, there's something we have to tell you. And Kyle appears and holds out his hand. Or no, 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 sorry. This is in the up there's. Kyle's holding his hand yeah, and he's like, Are you ready yeah. for this? Yeah. And Paige says, No, but it's the only option. And him and Paige walk into the light together. <gasps> and I have a you look familiar moment here. Oh. Funny, she's so familiar to me, though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars, that's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. This um, picture of Kyle in the afterlife up there regions very much reminds me of Leo in Awakened when he came to heal Piper from Aurora Fever and they're up in that little misty, bright light area. And so I'm going to put those side by side because why not? They nice. give me that same vibes. <laughs> so the next page, they walked into the light, Kyle and Paige. And she's like, did we do it wrong? Because it looks like the manor. She's like, is this right? And she's like, nope, you're moved on for real. And she, but she's like, don't worry, it's not permanent. Who's that? You say, well, it is Patty and Grams. <laughs> Oh my god, visit me from the afterlife, yeah, afterlife visitation. Like, hi, so great to see you. Oh my god. She's like, are my parents here? Her adopted parents, which is really cute. And then she was like, oh, Paige, I wish there was time. Too bad. No, so sad. No, you're not going to see them. And then <laughs> she's like, what about Prue? Can I finally meet my sister? It's great that she shows interest because it's the afterlife. And she's like, it's actually really complicated, so no, I can't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we see uh, Patty and Penny. And I have to say, like, this art for Patty is so good. She's spot on. Penny's a little, like, uh, was she sleeping in a dumpster? But Patty looks spot on. <laughs> yeah, she does. And, I see for uh, in her. Yeah. Yeah. So they tell her it's a little complicated for her to meet Prue, but we can use her strength, and they're going to need it. They're going to need everything they can muster to reclaim those upper regions. And then Penny says, we're sorry, Paige. It has to be that way. And then Patty says, but we're still pretty powerful without her. And Kyle says, I think you'll be impressed with what your mother and Grams have managed to pull together. So we get this kind of little shock that Kyle has apparently been working with Patty and Penny to put all this in motion. He's like, what, like how does he know all this stuff? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And so the final page, they go down the stairs of the afterlife manor. And down there we see Patty and Grams. And then Melinda Warren. Ah! Melinda Warren. She's so beautiful. She's like, blessed be, Paige. Blessed be. She's meeting Paige for the first time. And then we have all these other random uh ancestors but <laughs> yeah but melinda warren that's very exciting i love it it's the one in the red dress with the huge boobs is she the one from the mini story where she met with nina i don't remember her name you mean the one from uh charlotte the, the melinda's mother charlotte yes no i mean because charlotte charlotte was um actually a mortal woman i don't know if she'd be included oh that's true she was the start of the line okay yeah. right uh, but yeah, these are all rando witches, and yeah, there you go. But yeah, Tyler Le Tyler Layton, who played Melinda, amazing, and so I'm just glad that she's back. The end. Yeah. 
And this reminds me, real quick story. I saw the Jinx Monsoon and Benda La Creme holiday show yes. last week. And there's this really beautiful moment, just because we're in the season, where Jinx did kind of like a stand-up comedian little shtick. And she talked a lot about like how Christians like to like shit all over pagans on this time of year. But that Christmas and all those beliefs are taken from pagan beliefs. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about. Right. <laughs> pagans are given a bad name, but they're the ones who like originated the language. Right. <laughs> Is that my camera? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be jealous of my boogie. Okay, so yeah. you're, getting, you're giving me a tangent. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what did you think of this issue? I think this is an exciting trend that we're on, this whole story with Nina. I think the only thing that I kind of realized in this one is... Um, I feel like the story is almost too big for Charmed. It's almost like Buffy when the comic started. It got like insane. <laughs> and like, because Charmed is always kind of grounded in like, we're in the manor. We're doing this. We're mm. doing that. And this is like, we're everywhere, which is really cool. But at the same time, it's like an adjustment in a way. Yeah, we're, we're going into the greater lore that was never really explored in the show. I mean, they kind of hinted at stuff that being way out there. But this is definitely going into those new heights for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, I did think this was a nice issue to kind of like slow down and find our bearings before the finale of the arc. Cause next issue will be like the last in this particular arc. So this was really nice. Cause we take note of everything that has been established so far um, and given some real topics to mull over in terms of the emotion and the logical side of things. Like, where do we stand? What do you think about Nina? Can we, can we relate to her? What happens next? Um, I thought the Henry and Victor stuff was amazing, you know, so love it. Yeah, overall, <laughs> like you can tell it's being written by someone who knows Charmed very well and wants to give us like some exciting moments and at least talk about characters like uh, Christy or not Christy, Cunty Christy, um, Billy, like at least throw in like things about Billy and other characters. Mm hmm. Do you have anything for canonical? Canonical. I do not. I well, I mean, of course, there's the power of one thing I mentioned, but that's you know we talked about that. Um, but I have one other thing. Do you, do you know that one shot where there's like double spread and they showed all the realms and there's that one upper part where they show like all these demons and everything. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that we actually see a tracker dark lighter, a la like Ronan in Sam I Am. He actually had that tattoo on his face. Um, so we had like a tracker dark letter. Oh, yeah. Not to be confused with tracker demon or tracer demon. They pretty much do the same thing, but they're different. <laughs> um, but this mm -hmm. is a tracker dark letter. So yeah, fun. Nice. Next is tips for future white letters. Oh, we're really just messengers? Guides? Think of us as guardian angels for good witches. Tips for, tips future, for future white, white I was out being a force of good in the universe. What's the moral? I would say the moral is never give up and always consider all options, even if it's the most simple one. It may be the right answer. Nice. <laughs> Mine is to quote Jesse J. It's okay not to be okay. You know. Mm. Own your feelings, be aware of them, and communicate those things. Because even though it may feel like you're alone and isolated and going through a hard time, we all have those moments. Everybody has those moments. So there's always going to be someone who can relate to you. And simply you know, communicating that and allowing people in will show you that you are not alone and you can have conversations and you know, work them out. Touche, Kevin. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Next is... Ooh, onomatopoeia. What you got? <laughs> I, I don't know. This one, it didn't have it anything tricky. that really... Yeah, it didn't have much that really stuck out to me. But for some reason, the most random things make me laugh. So the fact that like all this huge stuff is happening on our double spread, we have crack and rumble. And then the next one is just ding dong. <laughs> it's just adorable. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, fun. <laughs> Mine was 
crunch <laughs> one pepper but the apple because it's such a gross looking picture and it really it made really an effect is. on me <laughs> all right now uh our most valuable panel well i mean kevin <laughs> can i really say any other panel besides this one with all the women witches of the the whole war in line like this is amazing seeing them all standing together it is pretty beautiful yeah with Melinda in the in the center, yes. Oh, uh, mine is going to be the bottom page, the bottom right page with Victor and Henry talking when he says like, "Thanks, I really needed to hear that." I just thought that was really a powerful and a really nice button to end on there, and, and you know, lots of meaning there. So, yeah, I like that. What is your sexiest drawing? Well, there's something about this drawing. I'm trying to get to it again. I lost it. But it's Nina again. Even though she has the worst outfit, it does fit her <laughs> very well. <laughs> so that, that picture where she's pushing the balls together, like right yeah. before she pushed them together, she just has the biggest, most voluptuous boobs. Like they made mm-hmm. her her torso and waist so small, but her boobs are ginormous they're like the size of the balls that's true that's true (laughs) i love it uh my sixth drawing is just something that i think is really cool and really beautiful visual was piper coming through the portal and all the swirls it was very phoenix to me Mm. you know that's just her her whole body in light and then the swirl is coming through the attic i'm like oh i would love to see that like play out on the show it would probably be really beautiful so that's my sexiest drawing (laughs) <laughs> that would be season seven money they would need to use yeah for sure <laughs> all right so now we have our issue ranking are you going to choose magically delicious pretty witching a sorcerer's apprentice disenchanting or vanquishable hmm. this one i'm going to say you know what i'm gonna go all the way i'm gonna give it magically delicious because oh. i don't really have any complaints like we get more story we get a little more of the lore like you said we get like a more sympathetic nina like we understand her plight we just don't like the way she's going about it kind of like thanos as well Mm -hmm. so this was a really good comic to start bringing everything together yeah I'm going to be actually be pretty stingy with my Magically Deliciouses, so I'm going to hold off oh. on that. <laughs> I'm going to give it a pretty witch in, because um, I do like a lot of the things that were in here. I like the sentiment, and I like, uh, you know, some of the stuff. There's still things that were confusing to me, and I feel like there could still be more. Uh, and I know things get go down later on in the series of comic books, so I'm just going to give it a pretty witch in. But it is a wonderful addition, for sure. Okay, okay. I do have some notes about this issue that I want to bring up. Originally, this title of this issue was going to be called The Power of One, which I'm kind of glad they didn't because I'm still very confused by that term in this issue. Uh, This is the comic that has the most returning characters in it. Wow. So, So that's cool. This is the third issue that Piper was in Circuit City. So three issues back to back. Crazy. Uh, uh, this is the first time Victor and Sam have been in the same place although it is unknown if they had any interaction because we didn't see it but I would have liked to see that hopefully that we do get that coming up because I don't remember oh the title last witch effort is a reference to the saying last ditch effort meaning a desperate final attempt the spell used by Nina the one that she made the balls go together in Latin means connector the ties the united Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. And then it says, Phoebe's altered version of the Dominus Trinus is very similar to the one from the unaired pilot. Um, No. No, it's not. It's closer to the one from the actual pilot because when I look back at that, it uses the same language from the, the regular one. The unaired pilot used great gift of magic is sought, and it says the oldest of spells are invoked here, and this uses all the ones from the the, the first episode. So this note is lying to me. I do not agree. But there you go. See, I'm questioning the wiki. I can call it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's my notes. Cool. Uh, tell us what is next. So actually, I found a little piece of trivia here. Oh. Maybe this will help us understand. 
Okay. So in the episode The Wendigo, Piper called herself the power of one while alone in Golden Gate Park. And Paige makes a similar reference in Witch Wars. So I wonder if it is just more referencing that rather than like the whole power thing actually that references Prue. Yeah, I mean, and they they do that all the time, just whenever they're separated. Like even in, you know, the power of two, he's like, she's like, Piper's like, what if something happens and you need the power of three? And they're like, but then the power of two will just have to do. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so I think it just happens when they're separated. Like, I'm by myself. I'm the power of one. It's that. You know, it's just kind of. Yeah. Totally like... Okay, I'm going to go with that. I like that yeah. better. Yeah. All right. But in answer to your question, next up, we have issue 12, The Charmed Offensive. And we see a very sexy page holding a very sexy, probably, I'm guessing, Excalibur. And then behind her, we see Phoebe holding the red ball and Piper holding the blue ball. And they're standing with, like, how do you say that? Like, there's legs framing them. So that's probably Nina that they're battling, even though she's wearing pants and not a skirt. And high heels. (laughs) And high heels. So it looks like they're going to fight Nina. And in the description, it says the Charmed Ones and Leo face down impossible challenges in a battle to reclaim the heavens, conquer the underworld, and save the earth. It's a fight that's been brewing since long before the prophecy of the Charmed Ones was foreseen and building since the first issue of the comic book. When this battle ends, the Charmed Universe may never look the same. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm almost like I was thinking about this when I was reading this last night, but Nina is so big. Like, I can't imagine what could possibly like come after and still feel this big. So I'm curious. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Crazy. Oh, I forgot to mention spell words. You might have noticed that we there was no power play this issue. That's because nobody used powers. <laughs> nobody <laughs> used everything was a spell, so there's actually no power play this, this issue, which is very rare. But wow, yeah, we'll figure it out. Maybe ne- we'll make up for it next time. <laughs> but, yeah, and there's no poll this week either because this is being released the same day as next issue, next episode. We're back to back, so there's, and there's not going to be time to get results. So <laughs> you can um, use my poll. Oh. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, no poll this week. <laughs> um, you can you can continue right on to the next issue. We're going to be co- finishing up the finale of Volume Two, and uh, yeah, and then we'll end with a game on that ish episode. So yay! <laughs> yay. Uh, Sean, where can people follow you and find you? Well, you can catch me on Marvelous Galaxy of Disney. We're starting off the new year with more uh, Marvel, Star Wars, and Disney news. <laughs> it's early. And then you could also find me in Once Upon a Cult. We're back with our last 10 episode season. Or you can find me on, I'll let Kevin tell you that one. <laughs> Solving for X, covering the <laughs> X-Men 90, 90s animated series. Yeah, uh, we're going to finish off season three soon. Yay, to start the Dark Phoenix saga. Yeah, um, oh, oh, crazy. <laughs> 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 and you can follow this podcast at Words of the Witches on all places, except Twitter, where that's Words of Witches. And uh, yeah, you can find my personal page at KGZ87. And yeah, carry on and continue on. Your destiny still awaits. Yay! Bye, guys! <laughs> <laughs>